Um, basically, I spend, uh, I work for most of the quarrying companies in bits and pieces, just do bits and pieces. So I know the industry fairly well. I know the resources. I've been probably to every quarry in the southwest. Um, and I spend most of my time fighting for approvals. So um, let's see. Um, uh, just a little bit of an overview about the soils and the situation that we're dealing with. Perth developed very slowly. You, you can actually read this, but anyway. Uh, it's developed very slowly on soils that uh, are close to the city on sands. This is up to about the 1970s. And then since that time, there's been some rapid development along the coast. And uh, I pinched this out of uh, directions 30, no, 2031, but it just shows the development of Perth through the years. So up at the top we have 1925, up there, 74, 2002 and 2008. All the good soils and sands are all along this coastal strip along here. So what we've done is develop on those. What we've been left with is the soils down here, which are actually uh, were agricultural, the Peel Estuary, those sort of soils, grazing, and so they're fairly well excluded um, fr from development. But we've used up all of those, and in doing that, we've used up a lot of the resources. If we look at the actual resources themselves, or the geology of it, um, we have the Darling Scarp, we have a series of the Swan Coastal Plain there, underlain by at least 10,000 metres of sediment, and we have a series of sand dunes that have blown in from the coast, and there are three series. Right up against the coast here we have the Pinjarra Plain, which is basically alluvial soils, come down from the rivers off uh, the scarp. We then have a series of old dunes which occupy uh, and were blown inland. In the north, those dunes are quite high. Coming down here, they're very, very low, and basically, although they're called um, Bassendine dunes, in many places they don't simply even exist, they're just a metre high. In the coast, along the coast, the hills along the coast, the yellow sands are the spearwood sands, all along the coast like that, the sands and the limestones. Then finally we have just on the very edge the little sand dunes that sit on the coast, the ones that you normally go and sit on in the beach, and the biggest development is in the Rockingham area. If we look at it in cross section, that's what we've got, Darling Scarp, uh, not shown very well here, but the Pinjarra Plain, and at Pinjarra it is flat, it's not sloping like that, it's virtually flat. Bassendine sands, the generally white sands, yellow sands closer to the coast, the spearwood, and finally the ones that, at the beach. Um, I won't use that. Uh, what have I got here? Um, uh, in the early days, what's happened is they developed all along the coast. And if we look at or remember back to where Perth has developed, that's where it's developed. They've developed on the easy sands, and I think that's the reason why Perth uses sand um, for building, because it's always been sandy blocks. However, most of that land has now started to run out. The sand, there are huge supplies of sand up here in the Nangara Pine Plantation, and that's now covered by pines, or was, it's been cut down, and it's got the underground water resources there. And that sand is going to be used for the northern suburbs. So for this exercise, we're not really talking about the northern suburbs, although there are a lot of low-lying lands in that area, out from Muche, um, but there are plenty of sand in that area. It's in the south where we have tended to use up all the sand um, that we're really concentrating on. So if we look at the Nangara Pine Plantation, this has come out better than I thought, this is basically all the plantation. This is development over on the side with the coastal uh, lakes near the coasts and you're on spearwood sands out here. This is the Bassendine sand sequence and these are the sand quarries that are being used. This is Ellenbrook on sand. Um, and basically this is pegged for mining leases and the government is basically supporting in general at the moment the use of the, uh, this land for mining leases. So sand in the northern suburbs, probably okay. The difficulty in all of this is that uh, Commonwealth legislation protects black cockatoos, and the biggest source of food for the black cockatoos in this area is the pine plantations, which are being cut down. If we look at the Spearwood situation, we have the coast, and then the line of uh, lakes. This is up in the northern suburbs, um, now up those sort of areas. Yellow sand, spearwood sands is how they develop. No sand required, they just build on it, move it around, etc. Not allowed to take any sand off. You can't take the sand off there and take it somewhere else. 
because uh, the government won't normally give approval for that. That's too difficult. Even though it's in all the policies, it doesn't happen. Tried it many times, it doesn't happen. Uh, but when we go down to south, this is at Pinjarra. Pinjarra is actually out here. This is what we're faced with. That area there, these are the low-lying clay soils. You can see the water laying on the surface. It's probably taken in springtime. Actually, it was probably taken in October this year. But even so, even with the dry year, you can see how nice and green the pasture is, etc. And that's why these areas weren't developed until fairly recent times because it was regarded as fairly good grazing land, good summer grazing, and it was protected. What you have to do now, though, to raise it is the sand is brought in. Good yellow sand comes from the spearwood system. This is housing, same process. Um, so the only area now available, because most of the land has been along the coast and used up the sand dunes, hasn't used the sand dunes in the Nangara pine plantation, but it's used up most of the rest of it. We're now stuck with developing on these low level soils. If we look at uh, Kiralup, which used to be Amarillo, down near uh, Mandurah, Mandurah's down here, that's, that's the area there. The, these suburbs developed on the coastal sand, that's all fine. This is what we're dealing with. These are the coastal sands with the urban areas and we've got vegetation protection. That uh, orange, orangey colour stuff is uh, wetlands. So the whole suburb is wetlands. And if you look at it, that's what you've got. You've got wetlands interspersed with bassendine sands, probably a metre or so high, and in between it's wetland. And that uh, area of metre or two high, you could probably build on that, and you may be able to move your sand around. But if you were to go one and a half metres of sand field on that, that area is actually, in that piece there, it's eight kilometres long by three kilometres wide. It requires quite a bit of sand if it was to go. If we look at the future development of Perth, this is based on the new um, directions for Perth after things like um, the metro plan, the last plan. This is the new plan for the future and where development is going to occur. Oh, sorry. Basically, they're going to have nodes of uh, activity. So Mandra will be a node of activity. There'll be a node of activity down here and Rockingham and so on, which is great. And you'll have houses nearby and you will have uh, industrial areas and that's one of them there, the Bull Divers Industrial Area, and people are going to work in the industrial area and it's all great and fine and fantastic. Except that, they forgot to mention something. If you read that document, there is no mention of sand. There is one reference to Statement of Planning Policy 2.4, State Planning Policy, which talks about basic raw materials. There's an industrial area there, industrial area there, and so on. And I was involved in looking at um, the sand fill for these industrial areas and my conclusion straight away was it wasn't available. If we look at, um, oh maybe I'll go back. If we look at the sand supplies just in general and overall, okay in the north, from here down south it's a little bit, tiny little bit around the Hope Valley Baldivis area and then we go south it's all been sterilised. And it's been sterilised because of housing, it's been sterilised for conservation, for green areas, and it's been sterilised by small rural lifestyle blocks, two hectares, ten hectares, that sort of thing, and by public opposition. And the other reason it's been sterilised is because government really hasn't considered it, even though it's in all the policies and they say they have, they haven't. And the chires, or the local authorities, that have all the sand, don't want any sand pits because they don't need the sand. The sand has to go somewhere else. So all the sand to go to Pinjarra actually lies in the city of Mandurah or down here, Waruna. Um, so, and at one stage, the city of Mandurah, many years ago, even tried to introduce a policy to allow no quarries in their uh, city. The two largest sand pits, and basically the only ones in the city of Manger, in the Peel region, are in this area. This is at Heron, and the, to put it into perspective, this is the old coast road, comes up here, uh, goes around the, up like that. This is the new Bunbury Highway. Sorry about the quality, but anyway, that's fine. This is Lake Clifton, Peel Harvey Estuary, and this is the area we're talking about out here. Pinjarra's out here somewhere. 
This is uh, NLG sand pit and this is cougar sands here. You'll notice I'll talk about these a little bit more. Um, you can see it's fairly well vegetated, highly vegetated. Same thing on this one. If you look at what the price of sand is, it's anywhere, uh, well, twenty to 30000 But if you look at how it is, X pit, it's about $10 a cubic metre, and that's about $7 a tonne. Transport, transport costs are 50 cents a tonne, and the trucks that normally take it are 25 to 45 tonnes per load, which just is an idea. You can actually make a calculation as to how many truck movements you need. But if you were to take that sand from those two pits that I just showed you and take it to Pinjarra, uh, it would cost you about $15 a tonne. Now, on this basis, um, if you needed 100 and well, 1,050 cubic metres of sand, um, of 1,575 tonnes, roughly, it would cost you 23,600 to take it from those pits, roughly. So that's just the transport cost. That's not the cost of purchase. So that's where the 20,000 comes. It's a transport issue. And of course, as it gets smaller, sorry, as the resources get smaller, you will find that um, the cost X pit will go up as well, as people are going to put the prices up. If I take the figures from the directions 2031, and I just went through, they divide into lots of areas. And the areas I looked at were Peel, Southwest, and Southeast, because all the others I discounted. There's lots more houses than this, but I discounted all the rest. And I looked at where these were in the lower areas, where sandfill would likely be required. There are 102,000 dwellings and needed in that reason, region in 20 years. Three industrial areas, and if you add those two together and take one and a half metres of sand on a 600 square metre block with 100 square metres for roads, which is absolute minimal, you could um, maybe even in have that as 1,000. Just at that, it's 107 million cubic metres of sand required. And if you add the industrial sites, 127 million. Now, if you need bigger blocks than that or more sand, you might be looking at 120, 150 million. Well, where's the sand? This is a, a sort of a sketch map of where sand supplies are. These, these are... Um, the red is in Bassendine sand, yellow is Spearwood sand, so there's plenty of sand up in here. This is Nangara pine plantation, pine plantations up here. I don't think sand's an issue in the northern suburbs. Down south, little bits of sand, tiny bits about here. There's a bull diver sand pit here. All of the bull diver sand pit, it was, um, did have about, uh, I can't remember the exact figures, but it was in the order of 10 million cubic metres, something like that. All of that is committed to Kirala, and they haven't even got enough. Uh, then we've got NLG down here, and Cougar Sands there. We've got another pit here, and a few tiny little pits that are so small that are just not worth even considering. I, I, must, I, I do work for Cougar and, uh, and have done for NLG, but I'm not pushing the barrow. These are just the facts. Nothing to do with it. Uh, if you had to take the sand for Pinjarra, it would have to come from those pits up to there. They're the only existing pits. There's no other pits available. There's a little pit here that's just been developed. Um, that's got a million tonnes in it. Um, so the two main pits, repeat the same slide. There they are, they're NLG, Cougar, and that's the Bunbury Highway. I'll keep going. This is NLG's pit. This is just perhaps illustrates the issues, and if I've got time at the end, I can, you can go through and... Sorry. I can talk about the issues. This pit's operated since 1995. Uh, you can see this is parkland cleared, um, Mary Chewett vegetation over pasture, Banksia woodland, Banksia woodland, very difficult to get approvals. It was approved first of all for five years on appeal, it was approved for five years on appeal. Uh, we've been trying for five years to get a new approval. It's over five years, we're still trying to get it. I can talk about that later. Oh God, all right, quick, quick, quick. Um, Cougar Sands, same, all, basin, all um, native vegetation, so keep going. What approvals are required for sand? Look, many of them. You'll have to talk about that <laughs> later. <laughs> I spend all my time fighting in tribunals. That's all I do with lawyers uh, and so on. Um, okay, what does Directions 21 
2031 say about sand? Nothing. <laughs> How big is the volume of sand needed for 102,000 dwellings in the next 20 years? Well, it's uh, 127 cubic metres. If you had a sand pit 10 metres deep, that's pretty good. Some of the sand pits are 20, but most sand pits 10 metres pretty good. It'd be one kilometre wide, 12.7 kilometres long. And where is it available? Well, it isn't. That's the fact. It's not available. Um, I've put this out of sequence. If I looked at where you might get approval, that's NLG Sands. If you could get approval to clear it, they've got about 14 million. Cougar have got 12 million. If you could get approval, that's National Park. This is all highly political local residents who hate sand pits. National Park, pine plantation here pegged. You've got about 35 million in there. You've got about um, 50 million cubic metres of sand. And that's only for 20 years when you need 100 plus million. What happens after that? There has to be some hard decisions. The government has to realise that it's now or never. The sand, if you lose that sand, it's gone. And those sand pits, those reserves back there, we must be just about on time, you're talking nearly 40 kilometres back to Pinjarra. And at that rate, that's $20 a tonne to transport it. And if you need $1,500 a tonne, you're talking $30,000 to transport the sand from that pit to Pinjarra. It doesn't exist. Unfortunately, we live in cuckoo land. <laughs> you know, that what really needs to happen, who needs the sand? It is the, the government, the state government and everyone else. But what happens is they make these policies, they ignore the sand and think it will come from somewhere else and then they leave the quarry operator to try and fight for approvals. And it needs to be one on the part. They need to say, this development for the next 20 years needs X amount of sand, we need to source it from these areas, we need to say, this national park that we've created provides the offsets for the Commonwealth, for the cockatoos and so on. That's it. Yeah. I've finished. Right. <laughs>